load my activity helps increase taking part. Six months. In this case, 
substantially similar motion to what had been before council within minutes, i.e. after this meeting. So that's precisely what I said. And as far as we're concerned, the legal advice I've taken, that is entirely correct in terms of the council standing orders. So, no, I have council can you have your answer I'm gonna move on now. Well, I'm gonna move on. Sorry, sure. So you do that, and that's within your prerogative, but I'm gonna move on. Okay? Yeah, I'd like then to move uh <laughs> our a, 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 a point of order, uh, my Lord Mayor, under section twenty-one point one part three. I want to change the order of business in the agenda, which I understand I can do at any time. In light of what happened in Parliament yesterday, I believe it's vital that this Council discusses where this city stands in the question of a people's vote. And I ask, therefore, to change the order of business to bring forward item 21 on the agenda. Is that seconded? Right, I'm going to move to a vote then. Okay, straight to a vote. Okay. Right, okay, all of us very back. Oh, what do you think? Sorry, thank you for that. On council council motion. Would you like to put that forward? Can you read it? Yes, I'm asking on the 21.1 part, I'm going to change the order of business to bring forward uh, the item 21 to take place immediately after the public uh, question time intervention session. So we're proposing on that. So all in favour?
May I advise members of the recent faith of Councillor Chris Brown's daughter and on behalf of the council, uh, on behalf of the council, extend our congratulations to both Chris and to both Anna. Congratulations. I won't be naming the baby after Richard, will you? <laughs> Sorry, Richard. <laughs> Well, then, can I remind the members that you are only required to declare at meetings any disclosable pecuniary or prejudicial interests, in which case the member will need to leave the chamber during the consideration of the item. Are there any declarations of interest? No? Minutes of the meeting? Are there minutes of, of the extraordinary city council meeting? The council meeting held on the 14th of November 2018. They agreed. With permission of the council, I have asked for request from Kosha McCain to speak in relation to the death of the Mayor of Kadans. Is that agreed?
I will say the words first in Polish and then in English. Gdańsk jest szczotry. Gdańsk dzieli się dobre. Gdańsk chce być miastem solidarności. Na ulicach, placach Gdańska rzucaliście pieniądze, byliście wodni w lota z uszami. To jest cudowny czas dzielenia się dobre. Jesteście kochani. Gdańsk is generous. Gdańsk shares its goodness. Gdańsk wants to be a city of solidarity. You donated your money on the streets and squares of Gdańsk. You are volunteers. This is a wonderful time to share goodness. You are full of love. Thank you. Excellent work on going through the Liverpool Dementia Action Alliance that by name has been recognised. The voluntary sector has played a big part, and the public and private sector. So how can Liverpool City Council be a leader on finding solutions to the future challenges? Can Liverpool City Council, health, transport and business sectors help shape services together that underpins a supportive community? How can older people including those that live with dementia, continue to work, play and live an exceptional quality of life in our great city. Can accessibility and inclusion of opportunity be the centre of how <coughs> sectors, budgets and services work together? 
can our great city of Liverpool find new ways of working to provide the kind of seamless support that people like Tommy and his wife Joyce, who's here tonight, need to continue to live well and independently? Anything that can happen. And I'm going to go to Tommy. Thank you. I'm going to try and multitask now. Yeah, I'm Tommy Dunn, and I was diagnosed with Alzheimer's in 2011. I'm uh, 66 years old, and my work experience includes uh, I started life as a train driver, then became the train interface manager for the whole of the North West, and then became the rail compliance manager. Uh, at that time, I had to hold out my hands, and they put a diagnosis in one hand, and in the other, they put a superpower. That superpower was the ability to become invisible in society. Nothing has changed in the past seven years. I am still invisible. Dementia is not a visible uh, disability, and it may not be immediately apparent to those around us. Having dementia, and some of it with our family carers, many of us sadly struggle with our disabilities, the impact of ageing, and the practicalities of trying to stay connected to our families, friends and communities. With an aging population and the risk of dementia increasing, what we need to do is create an inclusive and acceptable community that will ensure all the people and those of us living with dementia continue to live the life they choose. But how can we continue to contribute, feel valued and connected? Well, transport, health, council services, business and education sectors all working together with all the people and people living with dementia, they can share knowledge, experience, budgets and infrastructure to create better outcomes that provide a platform of independence rather than one of gradual uh, reliance. As an example, this is my view on transport. We know that a third of people with dementia live on their own, so it's important that when they use transport, it's a positive experience. Access to reliable, affordable and safe transport is important for people living with dementia to maintain contact with friends and family and they live, live some distance away or indeed just go to the shop to appointments. Therefore, uh, <coughs> help to avoid loneliness and isolation which can both adversely affect well-being. Getting transport right for people living with dementia brings with it many positives to the wider society. There's increased numbers of people can travel to shop and so there is a benefit to businesses, businesses and the economy. Transport providers spend millions of pounds on vehicles and the infrastructure, and they hope that it's suitable for everyone. But their most valuable asset is staff are trained on everything but dementia. As I said, dementia is not a visible disability. It's one more fact that travel can be beneficial to well-being. And it's about time the Health Commission has recognised the importance of transport and the part it can play in the well-being of people. We can prevent people from being socially isolated by the provision of a transport system that meets the needs of all. We need to put a stop to this epidemic of loneliness, not only to improve quality of life, but also to save thousands from reaching crisis point and being admitted to a hospital or care homes early. So we should be calling on health commissioners to look at the health benefits and the savings for the NHS, which could be achieved by having an inclusive transport system. Local government should encourage the pooling and sharing of resources to help from capturing local transport provision, working together with the voluntary sector. As I said, loneliness is a killer. We have carbon monoxide alarms in the home to detect the sound of killer gas. We do not have alarms for the other killer, loneliness. For those who drive, stopping driving can be a major life event, bringing about a loss of identity, and for some, the first tangible outcome of ageing. It's beneficial for well-being to have the opportunity to travel when you want to, rather than simply when you need to. People living with dementia and all the people's access to healthcare must be approved by better linking of health and transport services. There is a connection between travel and quality of life. When people living with dementia are older people are unable to travel, this is often due to loneliness, illness, low income or isolation. 
Evidence also shows that the journey itself, rather, with the result can be beneficial to the whole Travel in Poland is part of the general public rather than separately to reduce isolation and increase the opportunities for interaction. Easier and more accessible transport, transport can also increase the opportunities for other people to volunteer. With the volume of older opportunities, volunteers expected to be about 15.7 billion by 2033. This is a significant, significant opportunity. Getting transport by for people that need to mention and older people brings very many positive to the wider society. Increased numbers of people travelling to volunteer and shop and spend as I've already said. I want the other side to be the leaders. I don't want to follow up the councillors. I want us to be the leaders in everything we did. I want people to point towards Liverpool and say, this is how it should be done. This is the way we know it done. When I was diagnosed Manchester, he took away the one thing that everyone needs, that was hope. I'd like to thank Kevin St. Wilson for giving us back that hope because he has given us the opportunity to come and speak to you today. And he's helped open the doors which otherwise wouldn't have been opened. And that's why I asked you to spoke there, yeah, Councillor Wilson's motion. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and thank you to uh, both Tommy and Pat for coming today. Uh, and thank you to Councillor Wolfson uh, for the invitation to the support um, of uh, the motion at motion 13 today. And I think it's important, people quite often have asked in this chamber, you know, what is the word of the mayoral leads? And we have two mayoral leads for older people, one in the north and the south. And their purpose is to go out into that community right across the city to meet with groups, to meet with organisations and to meet with local people to see how we can shape our services just like Tommy's just asked us to do to meet their needs and there will be lots of different groups and that's why we have lots of different mayoral leads who can be really focused in depth, support the cabinet members, support the mayor in making sure uh, that those um, services that we do. Liverpool's done a lot of great things um, over recent years for dementia, the development of our dementia homes. I know Councillor Ross Gladden and now taken on board by um, Paul Grant. You know, she could be really proud of that work that we've done. But we're not complacent and we know that there is a lot more to do and there are a lot of families who are out there um, in society who actually don't come forward and are struggling and again the more we can get out to organisations and to individuals to support them the better and I'm sure our colleagues on Mercy Travel here today will take um, all the things around transport you know back to the transport hub so thanks for coming again and as I say it will really help us particularly when we're going out to communities with our inclusive growth plan they're the sort of contributions that we really need Thank you, Councillor Sophia Simon. Uh, second statement by Gavin Edwards in relation to item 14 on the agenda and violence at Wave Charter. Uh, I'd like to invite Gavin to address the Council. Lord Mayor, Councillors, thank you for allowing me to address your meeting this evening. My name is Gavin Edwards, I'm Unison's National Officer for Community. At Unison, we start from the premise that people providing public services to do, deserve to do so in safety and without worrying if they're going to be assaulted at work. We expect their employers, be they charities, private companies, or a local authority to take sensible and adequate steps to safeguard workers from violent attacks. But something has gone badly wrong. Half our members working for charities and housing associations, for example, tell us that they have experienced an incident of violence or aggression at work in the past two years. This is unacceptably high and shows that far too many employers are just telling their staff to put up with it, that it's part of the job. We are talking about incidents including violent assaults, people being held at knife point and punched in the face, people being held against their will. Consider these quotes from Unison members describing their experience. One said, I have been bitten, malicious allegations have been made against me, 
I've been punched, I've been kicked, I've even had to follow around the people I'm caring for around the streets past midnight. Another said, I've had a knife at my throat. A man attempted to crush me against the wall. Someone even tried to strangle me. The End Violence at Work Charter is a campaign which says enough is enough, where workers tell their employers to sign up to 10 basic actions to protect them at work. They include managing risk, providing appropriate training, and making support available to those who have suffered from violent incidents. These are basic things that every employer should be doing. But Unison need your help. 36 major organisations have already signed up to the Charter, including Action for Children, Dimensions and RMIB. But less responsible employers need to be given more encouragement to sign up. Passing, this motion, passing the motion tonight will mean that Liverpool Council will ask all existing service contract providers to sign up to the End Violence at Work Charter and, and make the award of new contracts dependent on the commitment uh, of, of the organisation to sign up. In recent years, Liverpool City Council and Liverpool's Mayor have developed an admirable record of working constructively with trade unions. Passing the, the motion tonight will send a powerful message about Liverpool's approach to ensuring safety at work. Taking this step will help reduce the number of violent incidents against staff that staff are subjected to and will show all service providers that violence against staff uh, providing services for your city is not acceptable. I hope you will support this important step and support trade union members who just want to do their important jobs without worrying if they are going to be able to come home to their families in one piece. Thank you for listening.
This is our parents' last home as well. But you may ask, why did they come here? Indeed, why? They came as a result of the call from the mother country. The majority of migrants intended to stay here for just five years. There were better prospects for work in the UK following the withdrawal of the British presence and the dismantling of the social and political infrastructure in the Caribbean islands. But then you may ask, why did they, why did they stay? Well, there's a number of reasons, but they were trapped in poverty by coming to worse living conditions than they'd been used to. There were high rents, low wages, poor housing, social circumstances. They did not arrive to the better life they were promised in the recruitment campaigns. Did you know that in 1963, Enoch Powell, who is well known for his rivers of blood speech, that he launched a campaign to recruit overseas staff for the NHS um, personnel shortages. He, he encouraged people to come from the Caribbean to help to rebuild the Commonwealth. You know, the people who are here faced with loss of community links, the environment, land and pop, um, property. They stayed because they started families and they had relationships in these new locations. They stayed because they were paying back debts incurred to finance their travel to the UK. If you think about it, one individual traveller was linked to the sacrifice of the family and community in the Caribbean. Each person was an investment in the whole community. So what would be the ideal outcome of this motion put forward by Councillor Anna Rodri? It would be education to prevent this situation occurring. It would be understanding that Windrush is more than a buzzword. The Windrush generation is a wide and varied group of individuals with a range of social and cultural histories. I would welcome the support of Liverpool City Council to ensure the rich and diverse cultural makeup of this great city is properly identified and shared to ensure that this travesty of social justice never happens again. In practical terms, that means that the history of all citizens is celebrated throughout the year in every social and political venue. Black history, like LGBTQ plus history, should not be relegated to a few venues for a month a year. Like the wide range of people who make up Liverpool, the Windrush generation, along with everyone else, needs to be a part of the regularly seen and observed fabric of society. Representation and education matter. We need to raise the overlooked and sometimes hidden profiles and celebrate the contributions. I'll just give you one example. There's Edgar Escoffrey. Some of you may have heard of him. But he's 102 years old. He lives here in Liverpool. He's a Jamaican um, soldier. And he served in World War II in Egypt and Italy. He's the recipient of many medals for courage for his efforts. And he's one of the people possibly targeted by Mr. Hostile in the hostile um, environment. So if this education had been regularly shared before, the Widrish scandal would not have happened as these people would be known, revered and treasured as the British citizens they are. I believe it's our duty to make sure this portion of history is not repeated. We must learn from the lessons we've experienced. We must do better.
celebrate and recognise the work that different communities <coughs> make. But I think the Windrush scandal itself it is important, um, as Marjorie said, that it just doesn't become a buzzword. And I think you know, within the motion it certainly is clear that the council does commend the work that all of those organisations are taking to um, make sure that the issues aren't just a campaigning issue, that there is change and that that education uh, continues, but also that those people uh, have justice and, and actually uh, apologies are given towards them for the dreadful way that they've been treated. Thank you. Thank you. Right, onto the agenda, agenda uh, item four.